Bravo. Today, we're finally getting this done. America's moving again, and your life is going to change for the better. And despite the cynics, Democrats and Republicans, we can work together. We can deliver real results. We're at an inflection point in world history. Things are changing, not just here, across the world. And the question is, how do we respond to it? You look good, President. <laughs> Earlier this month, Pfizer announced that its antiviral pill for people infected by COVID-19, I'm announcing today that we have purchased 10 million treatment courses. I'll continue to take steps necessary to save lives and end this pandemic. Peanut butter and jelly were selected based on their temperament, appearance, and I suspect vaccination status. I... <laughs> Instead of getting basted, these two turkeys are getting boosted. Tonight wraps up a critical week, and yes, we've said it before, for the Biden administration as the second part of the president's economic agenda moves on to the Senate. Back with us for context on everything we've witnessed, including but not limited to the pardoning of those two turkeys, peanut butter and jelly, John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning author, presidential historian, and the Rogers chair in the American presidency at Vanderbilt, who occasionally advises the current president on historical matters and major speeches. John, before we get started, let me embarrass you by um, saying congratulations on the honor you received from the National Archives Foundation, though the word is out around town. The only guy you could get to preside over the Q&A <laughs> was Beschloss, and I... I yeah. <laughs> I understand. I can't even say it with a straight face. Speaking of guys we both uh, love. Uh, but anyway, congratulations. I missed a big night in the nation's capital. So, John, here's the question. What what is the uh, the equivalent of this week in other presidencies that we have known and perhaps maybe not quite loved? Where is this uh, moment in right. in Biden's term in office or perhaps first term in office? Right, Brian, I just want to say uh, having Michael uh, and I on that stage was like the two uh, old guys in the Muppet balcony. Uh, so <laughs> you would have fit right in, my friend. Uh, uh, thank, you thank you very you much. I didn't know where you were going, and, and uh, now I've been assured. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I, let me offer a thought about how we, how we talk about these things. Uh, you and I have talked about this a little bit before. I think that Given all the news we've seen, uh, and we can use this week as a microcosm, one of the things we need to find a way to do is have our common political vernacular be commensurate with the stakes and scope of the unfolding crisis we're in. This is not 1986, when the president had a good week, he had a bad week. Uh, George Mitchell was mad at Bob Dole, and we'll see you on the McLaughlin report, right? This is, this is not that. Uh, a fundamental conversation that we had in this country, I believe, from 1933 to 2017, which was this figurative tension between FDR and Reagan, where LBJ was on one side with FDR and George W. Bush was over uh, with Reagan and you had Ford and Nixon and George H.W. Bush uh, in the middle. Uh, that conversation was broken by the 2016 election. It was interrupted. President Biden is doing all he can to restore that kind of coherent conversation. Not that it, we're all going to agree on everything, uh, but that we can actually see politics as a mediation of differences as opposed to an unrelenting total war. And I think that's a, a um, it's not quite a generational struggle, I hope, but it is a presidential term struggle. And so what I think we saw this week uh, with the passage of the bill uh, led by Speaker Pelosi, uh, with the censure of the congressman who was tweeting uh, violence, posting violent uh, threats uh, about fellow members uh, and the president, as I recall, the uh, McCarthy's long speech, which, as you were just saying, seemed to be have an audience really of one uh, at Mar-a-Lago, you, you take all of these things. And what you see is we have a president who, as you 
pointed out, uh, I support and, and try to help when I can, and I consider him a friend. He's trying to do something immensely important for all of us, which is preserve and protect the Constitution itself. And that may sound overly grand, and, and there may be center-right folks who are rolling their eyes, but it has the virtue, as Henry Kissinger used to say, of being true. It, this is an, a vital, vital moment. And I think that the passage of the, these pieces of legislation have shown that the president and Speaker Pelosi and, and others know what they're doing. Uh, sure, inflation's bad. Sure, the polls, it'd be great if they were higher. But 11, 10 months ago, people stormed the Capitol. So I think we just have to remind ourselves that the stakes are different than they have been in recent decades. Well, let me be annoying and, and rewind you to the second to last point you made uh, about inflation. Uh, because yeah. as 41's biographer, no one needs to remind you that the label, out of touch, uh, is fatal yep. politically. And a lot of Democrats fear that's exactly what's happening. It's it's a great point. It's totally fair. Uh, George H.W. Bush is a good example here. Uh, he's a man who made long-term decisions. Uh, the budget deal in 1990 uh, that helped lead to the rise of Gingrich, which was part of the rise of, of what we're dealing with now. Uh, he signed the President Bush signed the American Disabilities Act, uh, changed things fundamentally. You know, a wall fell in Berlin. A dictator's aggression did not stand. It was an immensely important uh, four-year period. But politically, in 1992, only 39 percent of the country wanted to rehire him, and that's an inescapable fact. Uh, what you have to decide is. If you're a, a president, and ideally you want to do both if you're president, is are you working toward history? Are you working toward changing things for a generation? Or are you worried about a more short term political benefit? Now, as you and I know, every president ever wants to do both. Uh, but you can't always do both. And we'll, I think these polls are going to go back up. They won't go up dramatically because of the polarized era we're in. But if you ask me what the most important sign that we can get through this is, it's that Joe Biden won 81 million votes and is president of the United States and has passed some really, really significant legislation with no help virtually, except for the infrastructure bill, from one of the two major political parties.